my screen and welcome ladies and gentlemen. So we should have Jenny, Vicky and Simon at the minute. Uh, hopefully we'll get a few more people popping in. Welcome to our, I think it's our third instalment now of our online coaching series uh, in conjunction with Juan the Man from Sudamerica Coaching, who is going to take us through uh, a fantastic webinar today, looking at all things constraints led coaching, uh, session design, and uh, Juan, yeah, really excited to, to see what we can pick out of today's webinar and, and start threading into our coaching practice. So, uh, Jenny, Vicky, and Simon, if you can give us a shout, give us a wave. You might have to just uh, unmute yourselves. Hello. Can you hear me okay, guys? Yeah, I can hear you. Fantastic, fantastic. So, I, I suppose introductions, yeah, we've got myself, obviously, Trevor from Alman Sport. We've got a fantastic speaker today, Juan from Sweet America Coaching. He can give us a little bit of history about himself in a moment. But Jenny, can you give us a little bit of uh, an introduction to yourself? What sport you're from? What your involvement is, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I'm the hockey development officer um, uh, involved with coaching hockey as well at club level on the island. Fantastic. Thank you, Jenny. Vicky? Um, I am a netball coach um, with uh, Castletown Netball Club. Um, and I'm hoping to start with the um, Island Under 13 um, as assistant coach um, once I've recovered from an injury. <laughs> oh, bless. What, what, what's your injury, uh, Vicky? Um, I did it playing netball. I've done the, um, it's my ankle. I've chipped the bone, torn the ligaments and the tendons. Oh. So I'm three months in now and it's still not right. <laughs> oh, bless. Well, good luck with your recovery and I hope that oh, comes right you. for you soon. And then yeah. Simon. Oh, oh, we've got more coming in. We've got, I better go and let them in on the... Uh, oh, Juan's done it already. Uh, so, Simon, give us a little intro to yourself, buddy. Hi, guys. I'm Simon. I'm the Women and Girls Development Officer for the Ireland FA. I've been in post now for two years. And basically, whenever I come on these webinars, I always take something away, which is fantastic. So, I'm looking forward to it today, guys. Thanks, Simon. That's brilliant. And we're very lucky today to have Simon's colleague, Lewis. Lewis, give us a little bit of a, an intro, buddy. Yes, um, I'm Simon's colleague. I'm Lewis. I'm the Football Development Manager um, at the Ironman FA, and I'm involved with football coaching. Um, so that's my background. Excellent. Great to have you along, Lewis. Uh, great coach developers yourselves as well. So I'm sure you'll have lots to contribute into today's uh, webinar. Um, back again for more. We've got Claire. How are you, Claire? Hey, you all right? I'm busy. That's what I am. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Claire, a netball coach and development officer. Hello. Fantastic. Glad to have you back. And I think, yeah, Jen, uh, Vicky, you were on, on, on some of our last ones as well, weren't you? Yeah, I was, yeah, but I never have my camera on. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to turn it off and put it on mute as well because I'm supposed to be working, so just so I don't get caught out. <laughs> don't worry, it's not that we're recording or anything. Oh, God, yeah, I don't know, I forgot you recorded. Don't send it to anyone I work with then, eh? <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, absolutely fine. Guys, it's great to see you all. Thank you so much for either joining for the first time or jumping back. Um, we just spent a little bit of time with, with Trev before we started um, trying to trying to explore different ways of how we're going to, to try to disseminate this um, around the the huge uh, network of coaches that you go in the island. So hopefully there'll be there'll be lots of people watching this record as well um, in some near near future, which is fantastic. And once again, uh, we haven't said Happy New Year, but it seems like a very very long way away now. Hope you had a great time with with your loved ones. Um, I'm not quite sure what you were able to do or not to do over the festive periods, but I uh, hope you had a great time. Um, I'm not going to bore you too much. Uh, we're just going to stray. We're going to jump straight into it. Um, this is probably the the theme around uh, coaching that has been keeping me awake for 
for the last couple of years uh, that's that's for sure um it's been it's been interesting to try to i'm going to i'm going to throw at you quite quite a number of authors today uh, and it's been really interesting to to be able to chat with these people face to face in the past as well um and being able to visit them in the environment and how they're trying to get to grips with this um it's a theme that paralyzes a little bit so we start talking about drills and we start talking about technique and we start talking about skills and development and stuff like that is is people tend to be on on either one side of the road or the other um if you would have asked me a couple of years ago i would have said yes i'm pretty much on this side um but i think with time with a little bit more information with a few more conversations like i just said um i think i've been moving uh, around the, the this I'm not quite sure what to call it this this schools different schools of thought uh in the last couple of years so um used to be a little bit more lenient in terms of where I was standing and um, I think there there could be a little bit more gray areas nowadays uh, I'm still adamant that, I, that there are some bits that uh, will never make a better athlete or, or get somebody to learn in a better way um so yeah let's let's jump straight into it um just before we do that um very very quickly I'm going to show you this the most boring uh and the worst probably in history uh slide ever hopefully you're seeing that and you're not seeing my notes you're just seeing the screen over there um that is the the the, the worst slide in the world yeah if somebody has done some work around keynote or powerpoint or whatever people tell you not to do it in black and white people tell you not to put too much information on it um if you can avoid white uh sort of backgrounds you you can do that uh, Trev, by the way, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna leave you with a chat. If something pops, up in the chat. Yeah. That's you, mate. Um, and yeah, uh, all this advice I've gone against you just just to so to show it to you that is it, it's not a new thing. Yeah, it's not something that just cropped out uh, during the last five six years when people start talking about drills and 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 how to try in a way to avoid them and make more representative practice and all these synonyms that we. are that are definitely going to pop up, uh, pop up in the next in the next hour or so. Um, so there's lots of stuff there. Yeah, there's there's, there's lots of authors. Um, if you just look at the, I think it's the fifth one down, Gibson, uh, 1979. Yeah, so we're talking over 50 years of, of research here. Um, it's not something new. Again, it's not something that it just started the debate a few years ago. Yes, we have been talking about it a lot more. Um, however when we start talking about research and more people understand by um, what's over there, a constraints led approach here, yeah, it has a few years on it. Yeah, so it's not it's not something new whatsoever. So um, I'll send you all this as well if somebody's interested in, in, in touching base with it. Um, I'm sure some of you have read uh, some stuff that is there. Um, so let's jump straight into, into Gibson as such, yeah, and, and get some background around the, the what well, was meant to be the, the the oldest research out there available to us um he talks about all these three things that are there yes self-explanatory i'm not going to read out for you um he he talks a lot about the environment he talks about how we can modify that environment um he talks a lot about how things like the weather and if we're playing home and away, if we're playing with crowds and no crowds like we're doing nowadays and um, where we are in on, on on that league. Yeah, if we're at top of the league, if we're halfway through it, if we're about to be relegated or whatever it is, yeah. Um, it talks a little bit about the the facilities and what they create around it yeah so if we got floodlights if we don't have floodlights if we're indoors if we're outdoors yeah and um, if our changing room side port are coming uh, and they rarely get uh, clean or if we've got a five star changing room waiting for us at the start half time and at the end of the game or whatever it is um so all everything to do with the with the environment around there yeah um it talks a lot about the task yeah and, and how we're trying to have an influence on those athletes on those children or those people whoever they are um in terms of what is it that we're asking them to do 
for how long, yeah, what sort of space we're playing around with, uh, what sort of uh, ways of scoring different points have we got, yeah, uh, are we keeping a scoring system, yeah, what is it that we're doing? So everything to do with, with the task. A few of you are teachers, so you're very familiar with this. Um, and he also talks an in depth about the individual. Um, and it's um, it's incredible when you start reading about Gibson there. Um, basically, he comes across like uh, we can influence very little the individual. Yeah. So when I first read that, I had the same reaction some of you might be thinking at this moment in time. Well, yes, I can have a lot of influence of what I'm saying, of what I'm doing, etc. Yes, you can. However, you're affecting the environment. You're not actually having a direct influence with the person. So this person will show up to your training session um, and uh, they will uh, they will have had a bad day at, at the office or a bad day at work or have the uh, exactly the opposite. Perhaps the best uh, exam result that they've ever had and they're buzzing um, or they just broke up with the partners or they just had a fight with mom and dad or whatever it is. Okay, so... He basically talks about the fact that there's little we can do um, around a, a direct influence with, with the individual, but there's a lot we can do around what happens around him, okay? So uh, when Ben Galloway used it in his, in, this, um, uh, in this drawing that we're seeing over there, yeah? Um, I really like that, that symbolism of, of the person in the green and, and everybody around him, yeah? Uh, because again, that is part of the environment. So we can have loads of influence around the environment, um, but there will be little we can do directly with that, that individual, okay? Um, everything added together, all these pillars, all these parts of the equations, whatever you want to call them, um, end up in some uh, behaviors. Yeah, behaviors that we're going to we're going to try to promote behaviors that we're going to try to disregard. And, and obviously, we got our list in, in our own prep. Um, so, so what what can we do with uh, with all this? Yeah, so we got all that. There. Let's let's have a look at an example. Okay, let's have a look at um, a football coach. Here, a couple of you are in football. Um, let's have a look at this coach over here. By the way, everything we're going to see in the next couple of slides is from Ben Galloway. Ben is a football coach. Aussie coach, um, and he's published quite a, a bit around constraints led approach here. Yeah? Um, and uh, as you normally do once we finish the conversation, um, within the next 24 hours or so, you're going to get an email with all these these materials, um, and I'll send you the full version of all Ben's um, research, which I was fortunate enough to to met last two Januarys ago, so two years ago came to one of our conferences. So there we go. This is a football coach. Yeah, he's coaching. He's also whistle. He's going to his green top. Yeah. And he's giving a very, very implicit instruction. Yeah, which is just use your right foot. Yeah. And I'm going to see an example on um, a little, I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call it exercise. Yeah, just for sake of it. Yeah. So this is the example. And we got these two kids over here, trying not to touch any cones, yeah, trying to go around all the poles, all the yellow poles, yeah. So there's, um, there's a reference of movement around uh, these two static elements, which are the cones and the, uh, and the poles, yeah, whilst the other two are waiting over there to do their own thing, yeah. Try to go around fast as you can as a coach there and use only your right foot. I'm sure it's also told him use certain point of your food as well. Yeah. I'm going to see a very different contrasting. I'm not sure to call it a contrast, but I just did. Uh, we're going to see, we're going to see an example of an activity where we're manipulating some constraints for them to do something very similar. Okay. So we got these two players. One of them is trying to retain possession. The other one is trying to tag him in a certain amount of time. Let's call it 30 seconds. You obviously cannot let go of your ball. If you let go of your ball, then you can't tag or you're out of the contest, whatever role you, you got over there. Okay, so the 
influence yeah, or the relevance around the movement is going to do with moving elements, which are the opposition, the ball. Okay, he's manipulated a little bit the space as well. And he's obviously added a couple of elements, which is an extra, an extra ball over there. Okay, um, I'm not going to do what we normally do in lessons where we go, everybody got that, everybody seen that, everyone happy. Yeah, so I'm just going to assume that is that is clear enough. Yeah. Cool. So what do we notice? Just before just before I play this. Yeah, so so tell me what you notice around the first one, which is the one on the left. Yeah, and the second one, which is the one on the on the right. Give me give us give us something. What's going through through your head? Hi Chris, welcome, mate. Good to have you. Hi mate, yeah, apologies, call ran over. Um, yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, the the one on the right looks like the game. Okay. The one on the left looks like a some form of. Like the one on the right, right the, the one on the left had a ball like the game, Chris, or not? The what? Sorry. The one on the left had a had a ball like we do in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it just looks more like a minefield than it does a football. Like yeah, it's too structured. The isolated one, isn't it, Chris? Go on, Simon. Go on, Simon. Give us a bit more. The one on the right, as Chris just said, is like the game. The lads are having fun. They can make their own choices. We're yeah. isolated, one is structured, and you must do this. You okay. I'm going to play devil sabicat with you, Simon, and, and all of you probably. So on the one on the left, we were also making decisions. We're also taking decisions. For example, I could go to the last ball first and come back, or I could start dribbling and then run back. So I'm taking that decision. So, sure, but you you can make you, you're making decisions on on the constraints of the approach that are, are be are being dictated for you rather than okay um, isolated decision making. The, okay, the, the defender is actually painting a variable that you can't get on the left hand side. Okay, cool, cool. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Simon. Who else? Go on, who else got something going through their heads? You've also got um, more people involved in the one on the right. So there's just one participant involved on the left and yeah. you've got more people doing stuff, so less standing around um, yeah. on the one on the right. How could you get so, more people involved, Vicky? Sorry, not Vicky. I've lost your name. Jenny. Jenny, sorry, so sorry, beg your pardon. Um, okay. uh, Jenny, how could you get more people involved in the one on the right? Um, well, you could add extras in. You could just have it as a... A game of tag, but I think it's good that there's more people involved in the one on the right. So I think the one on the left, you've got people just standing and watching. Yeah, absolutely. Again, if we take that to you to the game, if we could take back that to your to your sports, there are some aspects of of my individual performance that I need to improve as well. So, the the I mean, the isolated one. Um, so if you look at the returns on the practice, the player is going to have. A little bit more time on the ball compared okay. um, in a less pressured environment. So he's making decisions at his own speed. Um, he's utilizing. He's he's been told to use his one foot only, which is obviously ball mastery sort of stuff. Um, but it's less pressured. It's um, there's no opposition, okay. uh, and he's doing it at his own speed. And so he's developing a smaller return on the practice, but it might be relevant to where they are in their development. Okay. Whereas strengths led approach on the right involves opposition. So the decision-making ultimately uh, changes because the player is trying to get away from um, the player that's trying to tag, tag them, probably using more surfaces of the feet. Okay. Um, the, the, the direction he goes is determined by where the player um, sort of, is coming after them, trying to tag them. But um, ultimately as well, what's quite good on the one on the right, I think, is the player is coming to try and tag the person rather than to kick the ball away. So actually still, he still has, um, you know, it's a baby step towards sort of learning to, mm -hmm. um, if the ball gets kicked off the pitch, then he's got, he probably has to go and re retrieve the ball and takes time, etc. yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, good stuff. Good stuff. Anyone else? Anyone else? I think the, the, the third person in the constraints led one 
has more of an opportunity to give peer-to-peer feedback. I know they're probably looking a little bit young for, for such such uh, phrases, but, you know, certainly be able to give feedback to two of his friends. Um, as Lewis says, it's given the defender opportunity to sort of ball, ball manipulate as well, isn't it? So yeah. third person can actually pre- be pretty useful on the right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, cool, cool. Let, let's do something together if if that's okay. Let's um, let's use the rename. So uh, we've done this before with some of you. So if you can rename yourself, um, if you're on a phone, you'll find it in your three dots. If you're in a, in a Mac or in a computer, then it's just right next to your name. If you click on more and down, you'll be able to see the option of renaming yourself. Um, Let's use what's what's on the screen, left and right. Yeah, so write down percentages out of a hundred on your own practices. So if you could see yourself from some sort of drone view at the top, um, if you want to do it with your with your P lessons or whatever you want to think about, um, let's go uh, a percentage for isolated, and let's go a percentage out of what looks a little bit more like the right hand side with the constraints approach yeah so it could be 40 60 it could be 50 50 it could be 10 90 whatever whatever you're thinking just just to have an idea where you guys are in terms of when you used to coach on the on the pitch on the, or in the gym um what do you think what do you think so rename yourselves and go there we go so the first one here the first one you write is for isolated stuff second one you write so constraints, cool. Uh, Twenty eighty. You've changed your name, so I don't know who wrote what. So if you want to remain <laughs> anonymous, that's quite handy. Cool. Cool. Fifteen eighty-five. I like when people use fives. They can decide, so they put a five in. Fantastic. Cool. See, and I've done this with, with lots with lots of group of coaches like yourselves and lots of teachers in the past. Nobody has ever done a zero before. A hundred percent. So no one has ever written a zero percentage v a hundred percent. Okay. Add me to my data. Come on, let's pretend I'm doing some sort of research around this. Why is that people don't write zeros when I ask that question? What do you think? Fear of being judged. They're being judged, says Chris, very honest. Very honest. Cool. What else? So you definitely don't want to be the first person to ever do it on one of your webinars now, do they? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now I've gone public now. Now I've gone public. And also, basically, the pitch is up. So in your mind, you're like, I've got to give a judgment on it. Yeah. So that, that's, that's why you put a figure up, because obviously you've got an opinion on it. So... It must be a percentage. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so let's assume we all did some kind of sports or, or practice or PE or, or something back in back in the day, or we still do. Um, what was your experience like versus what you just wrote? Okay, so again, first number you write is for your isolated staff. I've got a vivid memory of my... Auckland Square is passing the ball forward in the game of rugby union where you can only pass the ball backwards. So anyway, um, what was the first percentage for it? And what would you say was the second? If it goes well, if it goes well, don't worry, we'll play a game at the end. That's what I used to get all the time. <laughs> so a few coming in, zero to 100, says someone there, interesting. You just play games. I wanted to be part of your team for sure, whoever you got. Uh, 82 to the question, Pardon, Claire? What's the question? So the question is, if you compare what you just wrote down, mm-hmm. or what you're trying to facilitate as a, as a coach or as a teacher, in comparison to your own when you were playing, how would you compare those two? Yeah, so what would you... I, for me, it would have been about 90% drills, 10% games. Or 10% constraints. That's like what I've just bought. Yeah. There you go. That's yeah, there you go. Yeah, r- yeah. R- rugby in the 90s. Claire is not convinced. Claire is giving me that. I'm not convinced with this. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, my rugby experience at school was possibly a lot more running at bags and running into pre-existing drills, learning how to do isolated movements for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there was a world championship for hitting bats back yeah. in the day where you were trying to get prepared for. I'm not gonna, I, I've got a little note that's here, here right next to my second screen saying, do not be sarcastic. I've just failed that miserably. But anyway, <laughs> there we go. Anyway, cool, good stuff. Thanks for, thanks for doing that. All right, so um, I can still see Valerie on, and I've lost her from, I can still see her in the participants, but I can't see her here. Can you see her, Trev? Can anyone see Valerie? Uh, Valerie uh, is a gentleman uh, gymnastics coach. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Where is he? Can you see him? Uh, yes, I'm here. Oh, you're there, mate. There you are. There you are. I just had to open up my, my screen. There you are. There you are. Interesting. Um, um, that's, a, that's a nice coincidence there because, uh, Valerie, you, you guys, very different type of sports. You got some elements, but they're not, well, it can be a ball at times. Um, but I would I would be inclined to think you are more on the on the isolated stuff than on the constraints. Is that right? Um, not particular, uh, especially yeah. on a competition season. We're trying to establish situation very close to competition situation. I believe it's more related to the right side of the picture. Okay, fantastic. So I probably will take it. I would give the sense it's like a eighty to twenty. Wow, wow, I'm stroke. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. So you, you try to put the athletes in a sort of sort of competition in Bayern most of the time, is that right? Not the most of the time. Most of the times we're doing more like a skill work, technical preparation. And the, before the competition, like a four weeks before competition, we're trying to uh, more uh, play like um, in a competition situation, do the more routines and uh, uh, like um, try to, yeah, try to establish situation in a gym as okay. close to the competition situation as possible. So I think it's kind of game, but not a game game, it's a serious game. Got you, got you. Fantastic. Brilliant. Thanks for joining the conversation. Uh, if you guys uh, would like to rename yourself, go back to your own names. So I don't have to call you 50, 50, 80, 20 for the rest of the conversation. That'd be great. Um, meanwhile, let's have a look, a little look at what Ben Galloway has uh, resumed for us in, in, in the two aspects here. He's gonna give us a little bit more, a little bit more information around it. If I can play through, that'd be great. Okay, so we talked about the environment being a little bit static. We talked about the implicit instruction. I think you all named this. You named, I think you named a lot of them actually. Okay, there's not that many opportunities for our perception system to, to assess for action. An element of pressure, which is similar to the game. Different behaviors, which is what hopefully we'd like to see. And we obviously look at different aspects within our own body. Fantastic. Once again, you're going to get all this on the, um, on the summary that you're going to get on your on your email. Okay, so let's have a look at that in a, um, uh, on an actual example here yeah, with, with some practices. Um, I always use loads of examples from a gentleman, um, uh, Sullivan, what's his first name? I can't think of his first name right now. Uh, Mark Sullivan, sorry. Um, uh, so Mark is an Irish uh, born, He's been in, out in Sweden for the last 20 something years. Um, he's very active on social media. So I'll encourage you to, to follow him. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna send you his blog, which is, I think it's, it's, it's a fantastic resource. Uh, we've done some, some bits with University of Sheffield before where he got his, his doctorate from, his PhD. Uh, he's a really interesting guy. Um, he's the uh, director of methodology. Yeah, so how people learn. Uh, around his club, 
Um, IKI Football is uh, a first division club in Sweden, um, one of the best teams in Sweden, actually. Uh, they, they've won the National League a number of times. They've got a number of internationals as well. Um, and he not only works with the academy and the juniors, he works with everyone in the club. Yes, yeah, so he works with uh, first division football players, fully professionals, and in lots of areas um, a year. Uh, and he also worked with those with those athletes, which I think is a fantastic job. So, so this is how a practice will look like. Let's think about the, the scoring system in this in this game. We have got some coming up there, but I'm not going to give you the answer. So, how to score points? So, how do you guys think we put some points in this game? I don't know anything else you know, please really. Any thoughts, anyone? In the morning, on the fence, I think it is. We're thinking. This guy is going to win the game there. Okay, I can play it again, but let us know any, any any thoughts, anything you you're thinking. Try to post it somewhere here. What are thinking? So the, the so, team playing out, the team playing out from the back. I've yeah. got to try and. Uh, pick the right opportunity to pass and exploit the space to to sc to drive the ball through the the gates on the halfway line in okay. a should situation which is opposed in a three v three base with including the goalkeeper a three v three. Yeah, does that make it four against three? You think? Or is it? Four? I, don't, I couldn't tell how many players were on the pitch. Was it three or? It's four black, three yellows. Four. Yeah, four v three then, isn't it? Yeah, cool. Uh, I think every time the keeper touch the ball, you got a point for your team as well. All right. It looked like a, a, a game of of scanning the the defense and the the space. Lots of scanning for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he talks about lines, Mark a lot. Yeah, his gap space. Yeah, there you go. Um, how do you score points? What do you think? Uh, uh, if the keep if the keeper touches it, you get a point. Yeah, there you go. Who gave you that one? Get out with half line through the gates. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And there's three types of gates. So you got a gate there on the red cone. You got two yellows. Uh, I'm trying to find. Yeah, there's a red there. And there's one on either side of it, which in the first clip, they're yellow there. Okay. And what you get one point. Them? You go one point for the far end, um, and you win the game if you score through the middle by turning the ball around. So if you are a defender to start with, and you score through the middle, you win the game, and you go on. You go on attack. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thoughts. Or what, what, what they've done thoughts? with the four as well. They've created an overload. So by moving away, and obviously you, you know looking for the gap, you should yeah. always put that pass on. So everybody should keep moving, you know, moving around. You know, you can either go backwards, sideways, as long as you retain possession of the ball, really. Cool. Uh, and include the keeper, definitely, you know, as the, the spur man. Okay, fantastic. Um, Simon just gave me a fantastic, a, a fantastic intro. We didn't arrange this before this, Simon. I sound like a magician. We said we never met before, is that right? Um, Sorry, Dad. <laughs> we... <laughs> 
we've been talking a lot about behaviors from the players. What sort of behaviors? We obviously have seen a couple of clips uh, and took out some more thoughts about what sorts of behaviors, what sorts of things do you think coaches are, are telling um, in, in the constraints sort of examples? Um, patience. Okay. Things like work for the right opportunity and stuff like that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, like, yeah. patience, stroke, resilience. If you, if you retain the ball, you can do more with it. You know, without the ball, you, you're basically back to square one where you've got to chase and retrieve it. Where okay. if you have the ball, you can just pass it about, move it about, and wait for your opportunity. Um, okay. to, you know, to, for the gap to appear before you can yeah. spring. So, mate, I, I was very lucky to be standing next to Mark in this practice, and um, I think he the practice was about 40 minutes long. I think he spoke for about two minutes in the whole practice put together. If that. The players are getting a lot of opportunity and repetition to, to learn how to do it for themselves rather than the coach come in and show and stop the practice, okay. show exactly how to do it. By the way, I think you said that if they, if they went through the middle gate rather than the two wider gates, that they flipped it round to become the attackers then they're almost incentivized to try and get the ball and wait for the right opportunity to try and play through the middle. So okay. obviously it's sort of realistic to playing through midfield when they're a little bit older or in a bit in a, mm -hmm. in a with, with midfielders included. There so you there you go. So again, the, the environment is being manipulated through the task. Okay. So we're not, uh, I would say by being there and standing with Mark that um, it wasn't, uh, relieving information all the time for the players, he was letting he was letting them find which ways to try to win the game or score points or whatever or turning the ball around or whatever they they were doing. Um, but he wasn't manipulating what part of the foot to use, how to stand, how to turn your body when you're passing. He was manipulating the task to again get to those behaviors you wanted to see, um, and again those those emerging behaviors were in his head, they were preconceived, yeah, and we talk a lot about this in this space, um, but for a reason, which is we think they work, okay, we think that if you're attacking in football through the middle, you've got more options side to side of you, okay, uh, just just to give an example, uh, but again, when we're, we're not giving information directly, we're not telling somebody, okay, attack through the middle so you can get out of the side, we're waiting for that person to try to click in his head, that, that could be a good option. Cool, good stuff. Thanks for that. Anyone else? Anyone else thinking anything? Noticing anything? On a Thursday afternoon? It's, uh, I think the, sorry, guys. Go on, Simon. I think the best way that a player can learn is by his mistakes and let them yeah. learn by the mistakes. You know, because if we, if we tell them they've got to do it this way, you know, right foot all the time, as we've said, you know, as soon as the defender or the, the opposition work that out, the snooker, you know, they, they've got to learn from their own mistakes, basically. And I think that's that's the best environment that you can create for them is a fun and let them let them be themselves and learn, basically. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we're going to talk about learning process a lot, especially with some of the guests that are, that are coming to, to the series. Um, I, I, I once again, I'm going to give you a, an example from my own experience. You would have asked me three or four years ago. Um, I would have said, no, let them all the time. Uh, if you ask me now, I would say that there are times where you need to rescue some people from that learning pit and they are stuck within their own learning. Um, and perhaps it's not a solution in, in a silver plate. Perhaps it's a small problem to try to get out of the big problem and start sort of climbing up that, that ladder. Uh, but yeah, I completely, I completely agree with you, Simon. Good stuff, good stuff. Can Chris, you had something before? Um, yeah, it was just interesting you mentioned the the learning pit there. Just that's it. We we try to certainly within the programs that I run is it doesn't matter how deep the pit gets. It's just how long they stay in that sort of negative part of of the graph is is the important part. Um, Sometimes the deeper they go, the, the higher they come out to the eureka moment at the end. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, yeah, I was just looking at the, the most um, basic of constraints, which is the size of the pitch. Um, 
and how nothing sort of gets my goat up more than seeing 10 year olds playing with size fives on full pitches of, you know, nine year old kids throwing full size rugby balls around, which must be like you and I throwing beach balls around. So yeah, it, was, it was kind of relevant to the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, good stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you an example from Eurosports, actually, from Rugby Union. Um, uh, most of you will be familiar with uh, the fact that we can only pass backwards in Rugby Union and you've got to put the ball down, touch it down and score a try. Yeah? So if you if you have a look at this, at this little exercise here with Rusty, some of you have met him before, who, who can tell me some of the rules of the games? Yeah, so we've got three people attacking with the ball. Two trying to stop them or trying to get the ball back, I should say. What are your thoughts? How do they score points? I'm going to let someone else answer. Yeah, go on. Sorry, John. I have to leave. It's not my field. You're okay. Thank You're you very, okay. Thank, yeah, thank you very much. Bye, guys. See you, Larry. Take care, mate. Thank you for joining. What were we thinking? Do they have to not get tagged and pass the ball off before they get tagged? Yeah, if, if you get tagged, then you got to restart your attack. Okay, Simon's got that one, yeah. How can you get some points if you are defending? How do you get some points if you're attacking? What do you think? Is it the same principle if you're attacking that you get better, you know, more points if you go through the centre than the sides? Yeah. You got that right, yeah. So you get more points by scoring in the middle to away from the cones. You get less points. You score next to the cone. Mm. Any other thoughts? There's a main way of scoring points that, that nobody has mentioned before. Have you got it, Chris? Uh, they're just trying to create two V1s. Okay, so putting people out of context here. Any other any other thoughts? From the game they're playing. Um... I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you with sound. I'll show it to you with sound. This one should have sound now. All the way from the body as well. Are you cool? I'm excited. Let's go, big fella. Nice. One fix, Surly. He's done you. Spanish shirt titles as well. Good D, Surly. Yeah, let's play this ball. Loving that. Two fixes. Keep the... Three. This ball. You've got to switch well positions done. as well. Can't stay well in the same position. Pick someone, if you get somebody like, in the toilet up, position, hands then hands you up, get a point. Better well done. Oh, let's change it up. Did you notice you had to wait to uh, move your foot? So double points if you pass off outside foot. Certainly, double points, pass off outside. Where did you catch the ball, big fella? Ready? Let's play. Up, up, Certainly, it's great work, too. Nice three. Are you going to support when you passed? What are we thinking? Do you, nice, are you fix. showing more Love points that. if you move the box? Think about what you do when you passed. Instead of holding it. Okay. Switch it up, switch it yeah. up. It's re nice. rewarding the mechanics of the movement of passing. Well then. Yeah, oh. there you go. How do you get points on defence? What do you think? Easy. It's, well um, it's like rewarding oh. the, the creation of two V1s and not just Surely creating two V1s, but also trying to instigate the fiction time. of the defender. Oh, stop yeah, it. Yeah, here we yeah. come, Sully, here we come quickly. What are you guys with, thinking? With What's hands up, hands up. Are you going to take into the game over there? I also think this coach rewards your points if he likes awesome. it. Awesome. Good work. Than just, just good the move, you know what I mean? What about you, Sally? You, know, what about so you, Sally? What flow, you, you get an extra point off him, I think. Cool. So, Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Two That's when people get agitated <laughs> with the coach. He doesn't like me. He doesn't like me. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there were a few, a few ways to score points. Obviously, by fixing somebody, getting them out of the game. Um, I think if you're on defence and you intercept the ball, uh, then you can go back onto the offence. Um, I think there was only once of that. Um, and the, did you notice what Rusty did with his... Uh, you, Chris, you were talking about about rewarding the, the way they moved. 
Mm -hmm. Anyone notice what, what happened uh, when he picks up the, uh, the, body the well. question? Nice, great fix. Love that. Have a look. Think about what you do when you passed. Switch it up, switch it up. I'm not quite sure why she's not playing. All the way from the body as well. Think about what you do when you passed. Switch it up, switch it up. Nice. One fix. Well done. Oh. Think about our depth, fellas. Easy. Well done. Cool, you guys up, come, hands you guys up, come. catch it there. Okay, so, so how much Don't information do you time. think is actually... Oh, stop it. Here we come, sell you. Good thing. The coach is constantly giving them feedback on, on what he, he approves, you know, and what they're doing right. Because obviously, when you've got that much closeness in body, you know, with the body and that you try and move and move the ball, you, you may not recognise what you're doing wrong. So the coach is always, you know, shown his approval and giving good feedback to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. He also used a lot of questions around uh, what he's noticing from, from the movement there. Um, there is there is a moment in, in in that little clip where he says, "Have you noticed you had to do this to pass? So every time you do the opposite, you're going to get double points." Now it would have been a lot easier for him just to tell him, "Don't do this when you're passing the ball." Yeah. So again, he's trying to manipulate the task and have an influence on the on the environment to try to get to to the individual, um, which takes takes us back to to the first slide. Cool. Anything else that you notice from those couple of examples? It was it was no it was no different really to well it was a lot different but it, it isn't miles away from what you'd see a lot of people do on a Sunday morning in, in a very block practice environment. Um, you know the the, the coaching get Rusty makes it look very easy and accessible and it's it's a he spent years doing that, obviously, but it's ultimately the coaching points he's given are often the coaching points that coaches are trying to give on a Sunday morning to the under nines. But you know, so it isn't actually a million miles away from what you'd see at a community level. Just it kind of is a million miles away, but it isn't. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you. I'm gonna write it down before I forget, but I'll send you a very good resource from the Learning Lab. Um, Trevor, he's, he's, he's fantastic. Um, they got a uh, they got a podcast, uh, yeah, the Learning Lab, and they got a really good website. Uh, we've done some bits that I've taken from them before when we were talking about our, our learning, um, and we we used the examples of the Tigers. Remember, some of you were in that one. Um, if you haven't watched that one, I'm sure we, we're going to get it to you as soon as possible. Um, uh, yeah, he's got he's got this resource where he talks about what Chris just mentioned. He talks about uh, block and random practice. Okay, um, I think it's about seven eight minutes, and I, I think he outline outline outlines it really really well. So that could that could be in your in your to watch list uh, for the next couple of weeks. Great. Uh, anything else? Anything else that is going through your heads? What what we thinking? I'll throw one at you. Um, we've all had the, let's call it a young teenager that joins our practice for the first time, yeah? Uh, and they never play the sports or they've done a little bit at school and that's about it. Um, and he's joining a group of people that have been experiencing that environment for some time. Um, where are you nowadays in terms of trying to put that place that person into into what kind of place? Would you throw them into a constraints sort of gamer like scenario? Would you give them some space or some time around uh, passing the ball by themselves or shooting by themselves or whatever it is, uh, or something in the middle? I, I don't know. Well, 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 what are people thinking around that? What do you think? 
Well, when you go to a new club, you know, welcoming. If I went to, say, a club, my, my version of welcoming would be different to someone else's. So basically, okay. you know, do I want everyone to say, hi, Simon, you know, how are you doing? Or do I just get on with it? You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. as a coach, I would look at the person, see how they are, talk to them, see how they feel, and then basically put them into just a simple drill, you know, like a warm-up to begin with, see how they interact. And if, if, they're, if they're full on, you know, they can handle it, you know, they're, they're looking forward to it. Just build them up gradually. Yeah. Just, yeah. You know, just just every so often touch base with them and ask them how they're doing. You know, cool. they're doing it and, you know. So Simon, will it be he or she, will they, will they be by themselves? Will you bring some people in to that, you call it warm up or? You know, I'd, I'd, I'd basically put them in with a couple of um, club members, you know, a couple of the teammates, because that's what we're aiming for, is them to become part of the team. So yeah. why not start off straight away? And okay. obviously give them something basic to do that they can, you know, they can handle, you know, so you don't basically put them off straight away because you want to encourage them, don't you? Great. Cool. Anyone else? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's... It's very dependent on the environment that you've got in terms of, you know, trying to cater for the differentiation within the group. You might have players that are are doing, uh, you know, have been there a long time at your club mm -hmm. and you know how far along they are. And if you've got a new player that comes out blue and do you have to try and redesign your whole practice or do you have another coach who can help you? Can, mm -hmm. can another coach be leading a similar practice next door to your practice, which is has slightly different um, rules and stuff and to make it a little bit easier. Or if you're going to try and coach uh, the new player within the, the group that's just come, can you design something within your practice, a specific rule which helps that player um, in comparison and to the other players in the group sort of thing? So can you just design something that makes it a little bit easier? Um, for him or her um, to get whilst they're getting used to the practice if they've never done it before so they've never seen it before um, what I really liked about that coach that you've just shown there is how positive he seemed to be every single uh, he gave a lot of positive reinforcement um, even when things didn't go well he was constantly encouraging uh, the players on the in the group so um you know, just by making that environment very positive, he's going to keep the, the confidence high for the for the new players, for example. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think there's, a, there's, there's an element of in, ensuring you don't make them feel like the new kid, though. So if, if you went, yeah. if we if talk of rugby and we said, well, we're just going to ensure that you can be part of the game, but actually you're in a yellow bib, which means you don't get tackled. Um, there's I'd, I'd be fairly confident that that I'd be de demotivating to the player. It sing singled them out as being the new kid. So I think it's, we, I try and create an environment where the be the better players become the, the, the coaches for the new players. So rather than a bloke like me nearing, nearing 40, he's telling them, how to pass a ball actually is, is the challenge for the for the cool kid or the the best passer in the team because you know to that that works then in creating the relationships whilst getting the skill acquisition in place rather than so actually you're pairing the new kid and the best kid rather than the coach and the new kid um, i just i just think it breeds better empathy with the the current crop of players as well as being more welcoming for the new player that's just why i like so, just going on from that, you know, if, if the club is, you know, you've, well, the ethos, if, if you want a new environment going on about that, it wouldn't matter who you put that player with because they should all know that we've all been in that position at one time or another. We're not all naturally gifted to mm -hmm. do that. So, within your club environment, you know, you should have your values and your values should be you look after each other and you help each other, you know, encourage each other to learn. So it doesn't matter who you get put with. But yeah, definitely what Chris just said, you know, you basically your cool kids or whatever, they they don't mind helping because they're going to become your teammates. So it, I, I take values of the club, you know, very, very strongly, to be honest. You know, they've got to be there. Cool. 
but the um, I think the it's always a, it's always a cool individual challenge for that player because that there might be a lot of players in in your environments in your sports that have have conquered the skill acquisition of where the rest of the team right. So how do you use the other corners of if we take football for example the, the psychosocial side of things? How do you develop them in that sense because they might already be able to ping it top corner by fifty yards? So th- those tend to be the players who the constraints are then put on more of, of, of the personality traits rather than the physical traits to, to introduce the new players in. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. There's definitely an, an element of getting people coaching each other, which I, which I like a lot from what you just said. Um, I, I do some work around, around some, uh, some companies, some organisations and um, they are investing a lot of time and, and efforts and resources in, in first experiences. Uh, when people join the company and, and what do they live throughout that first day, first week or whatever it is. And there's, there's lots of very successful stories around the internet from places like John Deere and Apple and Google and places like that. Um, but I always, I always think about the fact that what sorts of conversations I want that uh, individual to be having with his mates at school the next day or with uh, his family uh, over some dinner that same evening or the next morning at breakfast. Um, and I always think about uh, the experience of, well, I just, just turned up. Uh, I get uh, to pass the ball with someone else for about 20 minutes by ourselves. That someone else uh, really wants to be in the game with everyone else, not stuck with me, that I don't know how to pass the ball. Um, so I think about that and I think about... Um, I think it was a mixture between everything you just said. Um, I always put them in, in a place where, uh, where they feel they are um, ready to go all the time and they're going to score the majority of their points and um, their teammates will need them. Okay, so whatever that looks like in your, in your sport. So um, I tend to play a lot around with superheroes. I really, I really like the Avengers. So um, I, I will have the Hulk. Uh, being able to uh, run for X amount of time or run for X amount of passes or, or get as many touches if we're playing with a touch game or whatever it is. Um, and again, I'm always thinking in the back of my head what sort of experience I want that person to live with in their heads to tell everybody else. Yeah, um, Do I want them to uh, to be buzzing about it, about the fact that they touch the ball a lot or they, they, they shoot it a lot or they score a lot or whatever it is, or uh, that they've been watching for some of the time and they've been playing with somebody that they're not, they're not really particularly wanting to play with them. Um, so again, it's an interesting one, and I think it takes us back to the start where, uh, where, okay, so if we get this right, if we can all do this with our right foot, then we'll go and play this, this game, which was a little bit of the example we started uh, triggering the conversation with. But uh, once again, I'm going to go back, and I know there's a lot of grey in coaching, um, uh, and, and there's no recipe. Uh, I'm sure if somebody would have the recipe, uh, we would all be doing that, which which we are not. Um, again, I'm going to I'm going to skin through it, and I'm going to say that there is an, there is some aspects of the game that we can improve by doing things that look a little bit like the left. Yeah, with for example, with the poles and the cones. Um, but I think if we spend the majority of the time looking at something that looks like the game, like Chris well put it at the, at the start, um, then we are obviously going to be reflecting our uh, execution environment, which is our games, um, within our preparation environments, which tends to be our our practices. Yeah, so um, I think that's that's where we are at the moment. I don't think it's a matter of versus. Yeah, I used to call it uh, technique rehearsal versus um, uh, skills development. Yeah, and, and I don't think that's the right word for it. Um, I think anything we are doing, we are learning. Yeah, so if we take back on, uh, we discuss him a little bit when we were talking about learning, uh, Andreas Eriksson and his book Peak um, and everything that sort of, that movement started around Daniel Coyle and the culture code and the learning code and all those bits. Um, I'll send you all these authors, by the way. Um, uh, a couple of you mentioned the word repetitions as well, yeah. 
Um, I think I think we need to look at uh, this concept of repetition. Without repetition, well, perhaps we are doing something that looks very similar to the previous one, but it's got some sort of constraint, call it constraint, call it opportunity, call it whatever you want to call it, uh, that is slightly different to the previous one. Okay? Um, and my reasoning behind that, and this is my own conclusion from it, I don't think there's two passes that look the same. I don't think there's two um, two shots that look the same. I don't think there's two uh, kicks that look the same. Yeah, um, I think there are lots of really small factors that we can alter within the environment to try to get this repetition slightly different to the next one. Um, and I'm conscious about, yeah, we're going to spend some time on, on task. I'm going to start uh, practicing. So that's, that's how we become better. Um, but I'm also conscious people need their own um, uh, constraints. Yeah, we can we can individualize learning as much as we can. Yeah, which I know is is really hard. But really good teachers, really good coaches, tend to go down that path. Um, and, and at the end of the day, I think we need to carry on playing with with those percentages that you guys were were mentioning before. Yeah, so uh, I think that's where I am at the moment, and I know it's a big grey. Um, obviously, I've got a tendency to, to play lots of games in my practices um, because that would be the experience I like to go through. Uh, but I'm also conscious there are some aspects of the game where, where you need to try to get better by practicing them. And perhaps you need to take that photo. People call it isolated. Uh, perhaps you need to take that photo of the game and then go and do a little bit of that um, on your own time or doing your practice or, or whatever it is. So, there we go. And again, and I know this is very vast because we got lots of people from different sports and different environments. I mean, individual sports and team sports and shooting sports, kicking sports, passing sports, whatever. So yeah, no, that's, uh, that's where I am uh, once again. So anything, anything going through your head? Uh, what are your thoughts? What are we thinking? Would you like to know a little bit more in terms of the resources I'm going to, I'm going to send you after the conversation. Um, I don't know, you tell us. It's just it's just about getting getting it across in the most simplistic form to the to a wider audience, isn't it? So how to how to constantly seeking how to put it in the most layman terms as possible mm -hmm. to get your eight year old volunteer. I hope we've not got any eight year old volunteers, but eight year old parents volunteer yeah. to to move away from what he did in 1999 to do what we're doing in 2021 and I'm still still now constantly trying to seek the most simplistic way of delivering that yeah I think I'm going to disagree with with, with the word simplistic I think this I think it's a lot more complex to plan a session around constraints that around yeah no sorry I mean I, I know you're trying how, to how I deliver the message not not the content of the session how I get across that this this is actually very achievable. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's not um, it's not some sort of like who do magic. Look, and there will be a lot of your parents out there that will expect. I mean, I call them parents, spectators, or people looking at your practice, uh, or, or or just judging your environment. Um, that will will think to themselves, oh, they're just throwing a ball in, they're just playing a game, or. It looks like break time or, or, or whatever the terms you, you want to use. But um, once again, I, I'm adamant at the fact that I think it takes a lot more time and a lot more experience to coach like somebody like like Rusty, which is that coach that we saw over there, uh, and, and Eddie Jones and, and, and Mark, who I've showed you his practice before, tend to coach that uh, from getting three or four exercises from the internet, getting all the codes in the world lined up, and going and, and doing all these things. Um, because again, I think that the first example is gonna do with, with the individual. Um, and that's a really hard bit, trying to trying to reach to every single individual that we got in our, in our environment. So, cool, thanks, Chris. Anyone else, anyone else? Vicky's gone back to work. She felt guilty. Told you. It's interesting when you see the about people. Well, I took I took uh, five coaches over to West Park Leeds to watch Rusty and Fletcher a couple of years ago with the 18s. 
And like, and these are like decent coaches I, I took over, but they left the session going, oh my God, that's just what we do. And I, I didn't have the heart at that very moment in time to say it kind of isn't, it isn't <laughs> like, but it seemed so achievable. And they left thinking, yeah, we that's that's how we deliver. That's brilliant, isn't it? And um, but and that's what the good people do very well is they make it seem so accessible and so yeah that could easily be me when actually what what they were doing on the day I knew from my experience that the level of what they were doing was so high uh, it would take years to master that craft but it seemed so accessible to the five blogs yeah. I took over the days. yeah I, I look I've, I've, I've just like you because I've been very fortunate to watch some really good coaches coach there there and then and um, it always strikes me the same thing. I obviously like talking. I, I, I like talking. Regardless of my accent, I, I like talking. Whatever the language is, I love talking to people. And these really good coaches, they, they spoke so little. I just couldn't believe it. But the amount of thought that was behind that comment or behind that, let's call it a correction or let's call it a reinforcement or let's call it feedback or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think it's vast. I think it's huge. Um, and that's the bit where, where the legs and the work and the time is invested, um, regardless of where I put the cone. So how the camera is going to be filming or whatever it is and how many walkie talkies I can put around my head. I, I think the the work is done in, in, in those two, three words, in that sentence, in the way we're giving feedback to people, the way we are standing and using our body and, and all these interpersonal skills that are uh, that are the key of the questions. Yeah, I mean, I always use Maradona's example, yeah, the best soccer player, arguably, in, in history of football. Yeah? Um, and, and he tried to coach three different national teams and he failed miserably at all those three, three, uh, at all those three countries. So th there we go. I mean, that, that's a clear example of all the information, all the best uh, history in football, two or three World Cups, and all these things, but then he couldn't relevant and he couldn't connect with people, he couldn't talk to people, he couldn't stand in a certain way. So, um, and again, I think there's loads of information around how we pass, what do we do at hands, how do we kick, etc. Um, and I don't think this, at least, it's not accessible. Uh, the information around how how we try to connect with others and make it our other person and, and all those things that we're trying to do, it, hopefully, in this in these conversations. I'll Come on, Trev. You look serious, Trev. Always serious. No, no, I've, uh, I've really enjoyed that. I mean, unfortunately for me, I, I don't have the opportunity to implement constraints in my coaching quite to the same degree. Uh, I sort of stepped away. I was coaching with Chris in the development player programme for rugby last year. So I was having a lot more experience with it there. And it was really enjoyed, enjoyed trying to utilise it you know, mm. as much as we could, sometimes successfully, sometimes not so successfully. Uh, but I mean, I'm more in the gym environment now and I'm, I'm sort of trying to wrestle in my head how how to try and make it, see if, see if it can have more relevance there, where it tends to be much more sort of block practice uh, specific movements and there isn't the opportunity for as much exploration. So I try to create that exploration in uh, I suppose with the participants uh, getting involved with the programming and in the decision making around what, what they perhaps could be doing in, in that gym environment as well follow uh, follow Simon, he's got a double barrel name that he won't come to me now but um, he used to be the um, uh, head of SNC with Argentina and rugby is um, username on Twitter, and most of them is the rugby strength coach. I know um, who you mean. It's not you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Keep, yeah, keep yeah. Got lots of really cool examples around uh, how to gamify uh, or, or utilize some constraints. Yeah. Let's use the, the right terminology uh, within within those environments. I think he's coming out with some cool stuff. Kia went and flat that, isn't it? I know. Yeah, I know who you mean there. Yeah, that's he's it. Got a, yeah. Cool. I'm conscious of time. I'm conscious it's Thursday afternoon and we've been here for just over an hour. Um, once again, you'll get the email with all the resources. 
Anyone that's been here before has not managed to get hold of that email. Tell us now. No, we're good. Okay, hopefully uh, it is likely, once again, I've told you this many times before, but it will most likely land on your junk inbox or your promotions or whatever you got. Uh, it comes from MailChimp, uh, so it's likely to end up over there. Once you add the address and once you admit it into your inbox, it should work uh, moving forward. Uh, there's about 25 people signed up for this. Um, so I think once you go past 10, most filters will, will send it that way. So I'll leave that with you to sort out. Uh, you got my contact details, social media and all those bits. Uh, so any inconvenience, just let us know. Absolute pleasure as always, Trev. I'll leave you to wrap up and do all your admin. I know you love your admin, so I'll leave you with that. No, thank you, Juan. That was fantastic. Really enjoyed that. And it was great to have a good group of coaches today who were, who were really contributing. And that, that's what really makes a webinar, really, is it's those contributions that, that people give. So thank you very much for all of that, folks. Uh, so, yeah, as I said, look in your inbox for Juan's emails for your access to the recordings of these as well. And please encourage your fellow coaches at your clubs and organisations that you're with to get, get signed up as well. We've got another seven of these to go we've got one more with uh, Juan the man so just one more really don't good. panic it's just one more <laughs> one more with Juan on Sunday the 24th of January at seven o'clock in the evening and that's going to be around forging creativity in our sessions so uh, really looking forward to seeing what uh, gems Juan is going to have for us in, in that webinar uh, and then pretty quickly after they're going to come quite thick and fast we've got one in uh, at the start of february third of february and that's going to be our first guest speaker with uh, sergio lara bethial who is from good uh, i coach kids how's my pronunciation juan i'm not too sure 10 out of 10 positive reinforcement good feedback thank you good man <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be around uh, yeah he's my coach kids and the 10 golden rules to create positive environments. So that should be a really good webinar as well. Really looking forward to that. And just quickly going through our other guests in February, we've also got Amy Price covering gamification uh, and moving into March. We've got Stuart Armstrong, head of coaching at UK, not UK coaching at Sport England. Mm -hmm. And also from what, what's Mark's website called again, Juan? It's the talent equation. Stuart. Uh, equation. I don't yeah. say uh, where the champions. That's Marco Sullivan, isn't it? Uh, so yeah, this would be fantastic with uh, with Stuart Armstrong. The sort of title we got there is "Ditch Those Drills." So it'll be interesting to see what his take on that is. Uh, moving on, we've got Sarah Kelleher in flourishing uh, and creativity and purposeful play, and that's going to be on Paddy's Day. So correct. Uh, no, we're all in green, just like Jenny. Yeah. Make sure you've got a pint of Guinness on your bedside table if you're uh, in lockdown and tuning in. Uh, we've also got Suzanne Brown with Mental Health Awareness. And we're going to be finishing in at the start of April with Dr. Richard Richard Cheatham on learning about learning. So we've got a real Dr. Learning impact webinar series there. So do come along, get your friends to come along. And uh, we, we look forward to seeing you at our next one. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you. I think I've got about six, seven programs going on starting now in January. You definitely got the 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 star lineup. Uh, I mean, if I had to go and put a conference together tomorrow, those will be my my six picks. So very spoiled, very, very spoiled. Guys, girls, I'm going to leave you. My four-year-old uh, is about to blast through my office door to go and play outside in the snow. So she's been waiting for the last hour and a bit. So uh, I'm not going to be able to hold her out for much longer. So absolute pleasure as usual. We'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. Thanks, Juan. Thanks, Trev, as well. Take care, Juan. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, Thank Trev. You too, Jenny. Thanks, Chris.